In Greece, five new holding camps are being built to the tune of almost $300 million. At the rate migrants are crossing into Greece from Turkey, however, no sooner will the camps be built than they will be full. Policy is strict, but fair. And we need to make sure that the camps operate with rules, and that protects, first of all, those living in the camps. For these people, it's their temporary house, it protects staff, it protects local communities. We're now implementing a new model in the camps, these closed control centers, which provide on the one hand much better living conditions, a lot more space for each asylum seeker with all the necessary facilities and the kind of standard of living that you would expect from a European Union country, but at the same time increase security provisions for the benefit of asylum seekers, of the benefit of the staff and of the benefit of the local communities. For us it's a jail, it's a declaration of harmful policies that they are preferred by EU leaders rather than the care, the induction and the ensure of asylum. The number of migrants entering Europe is up over 300% since last year. There are many other camps in Greece as well. I visited this one north of Athens, which holds more than 3,000 people from Iraq, Afghanistan and Palestine. <laughs> This camp has been here for years and it's really turned into kind of its own little city. It's got market, nice eggplant, very good. It's got uh, all kinds of shops, barber shops, everything they need. The only thing that they really can't get here is a passport or a visa to allow them to leave. So this is a barber shop in the camp and they've got Yapaja and Yapaga flags on the wall from the YPG and the YPJ. Those, those are the fighters in Kurdistan. They're very good people, very good fighters. And they have been paying the price to beat ISIS and to fight Turkey for a long time. The weakest point at the external border is the weakest point for everybody. And um, people will, 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 you know, will exploit this. Europe has a new border force called Frontex, which lends assistance to countries as the number of migrants continues to swell. This is fantastic. This is and uh, that's the reason of my presence here, to make sure that you feel uh, supported, that this is an important job to be at the external border of the European Union. And this is a job we can do by guarding the border, but also according to our principles and values, the European way of life. I think these are perfectly compatible. Keep up the good work. You being now members of the Standing Corps, that's even more of an obligation. You will be the only Europeans working in an agency with uniforms, <laughs> with an EU logo on, with your own equipment. It's a, it's a fantastic progress. It is the first time that a European agency has, or even the EU, has a uniform service. So our budget is growing. Uh, we have a lot more responsibilities. You know, we are dealing with cross-border crime. It will become kind of like um, the border agency for the entire EU. With just more than 1,400 employees at the moment, Frontex is slated to hire up to 10,000 people by 2024, with the threat of terrorism being a key driver for growth. There are security issues and you have to at, at the very least you have to know who's crossing the borders mm -hmm. and that's the basic responsibility of any border guard organization certainly frontex we have to know who's coming in so that we can check them and screen them and then catch you know potential security threat the central mediterranean sea routes from morocco tunisia and libya are especially worrisome, and especially so to the Italians and the Spaniards, who have seen quite a few terrorists come through on boats from those territories, along with larger, more benevolent refugee flows where they're camouflaging their way in. I decided to fly from Greece to Morocco to get a look at the scope of this problem. For the millions of Africans who would love to make their way into Europe for a better quality of life, this is the narrowest point between the two continents. This is the Straits of Gibraltar. That's the Rock of Gibraltar right back there behind me. And it's only eight miles from here to Europe. But there's an even closer way that they could cross into Europe and stay here in Africa. And that's by getting across this fence. That is all that separates Africa, Morocco in this case, 
from the enclave that belongs to Spain, which is a city called Ceuta. This tiny Spanish city of 80,000 has been hit hard with illegal crossings this year. At times, that number's been fomented by the Moroccan government as a way of punishing Spain over disagreements between the two countries. 9,000 people got, you know, ended up in Ceuta, which is, you know, it's a small place. And so most of them were sent back. But it showed again, like migrants being used as, as basically tools, let's say, even, let's say, weapons uh, for other issues. Otman Bobo is an Algerian migrant who has already been deported from Spain twice. Still, he intends to keep trying to get in. At 4.30 in the morning, we entered the sea. There were two guard dogs there that smelled us. The guards told us to stop, but we kept swimming directly to Ceuta. While he was caught and sent back, the fact that he can make 10 times as much money on the other side of that fence is the reason he keeps trying. I have a job waiting for me in the scrapyard, just over there. A friend who I was in prison with is holding it for me. I'm not afraid, never. I'm 35 years old, and I've got nothing. It's better to die, to be killed. 35 years old with no life. It's crazy. But the threat of more terrorists infiltrating with migrants is very real. In 2020, just for example, of the 10 successful kinetic attacks on the mainland, half of them, five of them were conducted by migrants or people who came in as migrants. Uh, there's some thought that at least a few of them were sent in on purpose by ISIS's uh, external operations division. We know that the uh, people that conducted the 2015 Paris attacks and the 2016 Brussels attacks were purposefully sent in with the migrants and refugees to do those. If you talk to a lot of, uh, of groups here, anybody who's coming to Europe for, for, you know, is a refugee. No, I'm sorry, because most of the people that come are not refugees. They're economic migrants, and you can have specific ways of dealing with them, and you can let, but there has to be a system. You can't just open the doors and let anybody else in. From Morocco, I'm Chuck Holton for CBN News.